Uh, breaking down all the retail numbers this morning here on set is Brian Nagel of Oppenheimer, senior retail analyst. It's great to have you, Brian. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. Um, let's start with the MasterCard number because right. three, four year on year um, is, uh, I guess, would you argue toward the low end of estimates or not? I, I think that's basically in line with expectations. There was a lot of chatter out there about, there about three to four percent. So we're kind of in the midpoint of that. Um, well, obviously, within those numbers, which you were talking about, much stronger online sales. But even in-store sales, given the MasterCard data, was up slightly, you know, like 1.2%, 1, 1. which is, is overall positive. All right. Uh, and then we couple that with what Tiffany has said about uh, mainland China and uh, Hong Kong and Japan. What's the overall tone uh, to you right now? Well, look, I, I think the Tiffany report this morning is actually quite interesting. Now, it doesn't mean as much for the stock anymore, given the pending purchased by LVMH. But Tiffany, I know, looked in the Tiffany report, you saw a couple, I think, positive things. One, like you said, Carl, very continued strong sales in mainland China. So that just tells me that in China, this Tiffany, this U.S. Tiffany brand is continuing to resonate. But also we saw a modest uptick in domestic, which Tiffany's been struggling domestically. You saw a modest uptick here in, in the holiday period. To me, that's a positive for Tiffany, but probably more importantly, just a positive for overall discretionary spending. What amazes me is despite the increase in online sales, there's still only 15% of total yeah. online sales. I bring this up at the holidays all the time with my friends and family, and they say, no, that's not possible. I do all my shopping online. And yet the evidence is an awful lot of shopping is still done face-to-face -face in retail sites on brick-and-mortar stores. How do you account for the fact that the, the public seems to believe everything's done online, but it's not? Somebody's buying in stores rather aggressively still. Look, I think it's a great point. And so I take a company, when I make this point, I think a company like Best Buy. You know, so Best Buy several years ago did a phenomenal job of really reconfiguring their business model to compete better online. So you look what Best Buy is doing now is, yes, they have, you know, 25% or so of their sales online, but a lot of that's happening in the store. You know, and that, and that consumer that's shopping online is also utilizing the Best Buy store. So, to your point, Bob, I think you're, you're seeing this, this, this omni-channel model really take hold, where it's, yes, there's an online piece, but the stores are still very important. And that's true for other, other retailers as well. I think Best Buy's is one of the best examples. So what happens to the gaps in the Macy's next year? Well, look, I don't, I, you know, in my universe, I don't spend a lot of time with clothing, but I've got to think, you know, that subsector within retail continues to struggle. And that's really where Amazon's having a big impact. Amazon and others, you know, other smaller brands that are going direct to consumer with online. So I, my sense is they continue to struggle. I think, but I think what we're seeing now is this increasingly large divide between the winners and the losers. And like every year it gets wider and wider. But on the winners, there, there are clearly physical retailers there, Best Buy being one of them. Another name we haven't mentioned in a while, but Five Below. It's a, it's a smaller, you know, store that sells stuff that's t historically under $5. They're doing really well in their stores. Do you think LVMH will be a better steward for Tiffany than even Tiffany was? What's amazing to me is how well LVMH has done increasing uh, margins for some of its high-end luxury brands. They've done a remarkable job and been rewarded for it. Really amazing. Do you feel Tiffany's will flourish under LVMH? I do. You know, I, I've followed Tiffany now for more than a decade, and they've had their ups and downs. But look, I think, I think this move to be bought by LVMH is exactly what that brand needs. You can bring more brand expertise in. I also think there will be the potential for LVMH to sell a wider selection of the products within their broader portfolio in Tiffany stores, which will really help to boost or bolster that, uh, that product selection for customers. Ryan, what's the lesson of Best Buy? You know, I can remember sitting at this desk four years ago, let's call it, when the stock was at lows, maybe it's five, and people were saying maybe they'll go private or they'll try and figure something out. And they're getting Amazon, they're getting showroom. That was what we kept talking about. What did they do right? And what is it that other retailers could look at or have failed to already understand from Best Buy's experience and be able to replicate? It's a, it's a great question. And, if I, and I just sum it up, I think there's, there's probably two big takeaways. I mean, one, and this sounds pretty simple, but take Amazon seriously as a competitor. You know, we're talk, we used to talk about showrooming all the time. What allowed that to happen was that Best Buy was not pricing against Amazon. So the consumer would come to the Best Buy store, look at the TV, while in the store on their smartphone, realize they could purchase that TV cheaper at Amazon. So Best Buy pricing against Amazon was a big positive. And the other, and the kind of points we were making before, is really you know, leverage, leverage the power of these stores. You know, especially for a category like consumer electronics, where especially larger screen TVs or other, cat, other pieces, People want to see that, that, that product. They want to be educated on that product. So really, so take Amazon seriously, leverage the power of these stores. I think the, the key th point, though, though, is how rare a Best Buy is. Like we're talking about, it's not quite a unicorn, but it's unusual. It's even unusual for apparel and 
and the other store, Nike, for example, and Lululemon, they stand out as unusual considering the number of the, the, the disaster in some of the department stores and apparel. Nike's there and Lululemon's there too. But again, the group that's real winners is remarkably small. I totally agree. And look, the, and the key for Nike and Lululemon is, you know, with online, with digital, those brands are learning, are really leveraging less of a need for, for distribution partners. They're going more direct to consumer. Yeah. That's helping both their margins, it's, and it's helping as they bring digital into their business models, it's really helping the product development as well. For me, I think uh, you mentioned Best Buy. I think pickup uh, is a huge issue. I noticed Amazon said uh, pickup fulfillment at their pickup points, 60% year yeah. on year. I mean, that's for those who don't want to go in and be educated, who know exactly what they want, that's a big deal. Yeah, most, look, most retailers, are, are talk, most of the retailers I follow talk about buy online, pick up in store, representing 50% upwards of 70% of their online sales. So that consumer's going online, purchasing the product, but then subsequently going to the store and, and picking it up. Ryan, That's a is there puzzle. any retailer you can think of this year that next year will be saying, oh, that was surprising. That was a surprising resurgence on their part, or they suddenly got it, or were surprised. I mean, Target has been an example that we've seen this year. Yeah. Not that they were in that bad a place, but they have just picked it up enormously over the course of the year, and the stock has reflected that. Any sense as to any, any retailer we're not thinking of that conceivably a year from now we'll be talking about in that way? Well, look, I've been, I've been talking about Lowe's for a while. It's not necessarily a holiday play, but I think the Lowe's, under new management, Lowe's is becoming a much better operated company. The stock is still cheap here relative to Home Depot. And I, I think too, as we look towards 2020, that's really going to be the year that Lowe's starts to catch its stride, so to say, in, the, in that home improvement space, which is still very, very healthy, given lower interest rates and overall healthy housing environment. Plus questions about Depot's execution uh, last couple of quarters, for sure. Absolutely. I mean, look, Home Depot's an extraordinarily well-run company. But they have been weaker lately, and I tend to think that weakness at Home Depot is in part a reflection of lows getting better.